Welcome to Terribly Accurate and to the month of March. In this video, we are going to look at the overall vibe for the month. Will you find your pot of gold? Are you gonna get lucky in love? Where do you need to push your luck to get ahead? What rain will be hitting your life? What will the rainbow after be? And then if you stick around all the way to the end of the video, you will find out what is your crystal of the month and what is it good for? How's it gonna help you? As well as figuring out how you can get a free reading from me. This video is for Cancer. Sun, moon, rising, but not Venus. Unless you are spying on somebody else's um, love forecast, for example, then it's for their Venus. But this video right here is gonna show you how to get the most out of these videos that I make or that anybody else makes for taroscopes, horoscopes, whatever, or even ones that you would read online. And one more thing, there are links below to connect you to the taroscopes that I've been making online for all zodiac signs. And now let's get started. Cancer, your overall vibe for the month is, is not dissimilar from what a lot of other people are experiencing. You might be feeling a little unstable. You might be feeling financially uneasy. You might be feeling like your schedule is a nightmare. Um, so is there anything we can do immediately to turn that around? Just know that that can change overnight, that you can totally get a grip overnight and have a different reality. Like, um, you know, they say the only constant is change. So expect that and expect it to happen quickly for you. Um, will you find your pot of gold? What's up with your finances? And they're like, you might get some good financial news coming your way. It is likely that it is going to come through uh, a, an electronic source. So it could be somebody calling you up on the phone, but it's more likely that it comes in the form of an email or um, in a message, you know, like a text message or a Facebook message, something like that. Maybe it's um, something you get from your bank, like, hey, we fucked up, surprise, here's $500. It could be anything like that. Um, maybe you track your, your stock market picks or something like that. Maybe you'll get lucky that way. But they're saying like, it's good news that is coming your way, probably via an electronic source. So nobody's gonna like knock on your door, surprise, publisher's clearinghouse. I don't even know if that's still a thing. Um, but anyway, that's what's coming. So that's fantastic. Um, will you get lucky in love if you are single? They're like, this might not be your luckiest month, to be honest. Anything you can do to turn that around? They're like, well, the thing is, is you're not really excited to sort of get lucky in love this month. So probably not unless you change your attitude. For those of you who are coupled, what they're saying is, the biggest thing for you right now in the month of March is figuring out what's the most important thing. And you're getting a little bit confused. Do I need more alone time? Do I need more together time? Um, is it important that we move in together? Is it important that we get married? Is it important that we communicate more? Is it important that we communicate less? You know, there's all of this stuff just kind of brewing around and so it's hard to figure out the focus here. Is there anything you can do to help yourself out with that? And they're like, well, the problem is, is it's easier to know what you don't want than what you do want. But when we focus on what we don't want, we attract more of that into our life. So they're like, why don't we just focus on what's going right? How about that? What are the things that don't suck in your relationship? Not that your relationship's gonna suck this month, but just constantly focus on the things that are positive there, right? Um, instead of because otherwise you're gonna work yourself into a tizzy. And the more that we focus on the things that are positive, the more that we start to figure out what we want and the more that we get what we want. Anything is possible in this relationship, but we need to have our focus be on what we truly desire for it. And then we can have that, okay? Now, if you are in a complicated relationship where it's like on again, off again, where maybe you're just talking to each other and it's not Facebook official or whatever, the big, uh, challenges for you is are to be kind of excited about that and then to be patient and wait to see how things grow. Now being patient isn't everybody's strong suit um, but they're saying you kind of need that right now because there's um, this desire to have a really balanced relationship in the future where you don't have to give too much of your time, energy, love, caring, kindness, whatever. Um, you want to receive that at the same rate as you give it and you don't want to get emotionally effed up over it. So it's better that things take the time that they do. They're saying, and when you allow it 
a certain amount of time and space, then you're more open to receive love and kindness, all the things you desire from a partner, okay? Now, where in your life do you need to push your luck a little bit to help you get what you want? And they're saying, um, <laughs> in the things that make you feel emotionally sort of crazy, um, that have to do with that sort of balance that I mentioned for the it's complicated people. Um, now, what makes you emotionally crazy about your day-to-day -day life, about your finances, about your work, about your work-life balance, about all of those things, maybe even your taxes, they're like, be patient there also. Because consistent little steps build up to be like one big thing. I know personally, I don't have any cancer in my chart, but I get really stressed out about all the shit that I have to do for my taxes, right? And so if I were just to spend 10 minutes a day organizing my receipts, at the end of the year, it will be far less of a nightmare, right? Um, is there anything that we need to be warned about, the rain that will be hitting your life? And they're just saying, um, you know, really, there's some stuff that's not gonna go down the way you want it to, but it's really not that big of a deal because like you'll look back at this time and you'll say, oh, okay, remember that silly thing? It's kind of like, for example, um, you know, something embarrassing happens. And right now that really, really sucks. But two, three, four, five years from now, it's gonna be a really funny story that we can tell at a party. It's that sort of energy, okay? Now, what will the rainbow be? What is the reward of getting through that stuff? And they're just like, well, right now, you might just feel kind of like, you're feeling the blahs, like, Bleh. but you really realize that you're not connected to anything forever. Like anything that sucks, it goes away. You're not, it's not like a life sentence. So that's the reward there, <laughs> is that that's knowledge or information that you can carry forward. So now we're gonna switch gears and head over to our crystal of the month, our power crystals. Amethyst is safe to run under cold water, to soak it in salt water to cleanse it, and it's also safe in sunlight, although if you leave it in the sun for a really long time, it could start to lose its color, so you might want to recharge it in small doses. The angel associated to Amethyst is Archangel Michael. Amethyst is associated with the third eye chakra, the purple one known as the pineal gland between your eyebrows. Amethyst is safe to put on top of your skin, therefore you can place this crystal directly on top of your third eye chakra. Amethyst is well known for increasing psychic abilities as well as increasing clairvoyance, using that third eye chakra to see what is ahead, what is coming. It helps with visualization, so it is a good stone for creating vision boards, and it helps you to interpret your dreams, therefore it's a good crystal to put underneath your pillow. It increases your level of inspiration and it helps you to be more honest. It calms anxiety as well. It's a good meditation tool and it brings clarity of the mind. It increases your overall vibration, therefore heightening your awareness as well as your intuition and therefore is also a fantastic stone for using the law of attraction. Amethyst increases courage, kindness and understanding. Amethyst helps to eliminate negative thoughts and it also is a protective stone just like many root chakra stones would do for you. Amethyst reinforces a sense of justice and it calms your passions, which is a good thing when you have violent emotions or anger. Amethyst helps to overcome grief from mourning and increases deep inner peace and helps you to discover your own inner wisdom, hence the reason why it is used as a meditation tool. Amethyst is great for easing addictions, especially when the addictions are drug or alcohol related. Amethyst can work as a pain reliever because it helps increase your level of relaxation, therefore it is particularly helpful in muscle pain. Amethyst can calm the lungs and help reduce the symptoms of respiratory illness. It will ease inflammation as well as the symptoms of skin problems. Amethyst assists your intestines and gut bacteria and so can help to eliminate the presence of parasites in the gut. Amethyst purifies the blood and it strengthens the endocrine and immune systems.